All right, you guys, it is June 18th, 2024, and as you can see, we are not starting on Radar Omega. That is because last night at 5 p.m. Eastern, we got Potential Tropical Cyclone 1. Basically, what a Potential Tropical Cyclone is, is it's not a cyclone, it's not like a depression or a storm. However, the National Hurricane Center believes that it will be, and this allows them to start issuing watches and warnings along the coastline. And that's what they did at 5 p.m. Eastern yesterday, June 17th. And that's what designated potential tropical cyclone one. So let's go in and read the outlook here. We'll take a look at the forecast advisory, and then we'll take a look at all the wind speed probabilities and that stuff. So, public advisory number one. This is out at, right now pretty much, this update just came out. It's location, we'll go through all that in the advisory. So... Central Tropical Cyclone 1, Advisory Number 4, NWS National Hurricane Center, Miami, Florida, 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time, Tuesday, June 18th, 2024. Headline of this conflict, of this advisory is, Disturbance expected to bring heavy rains and coastal flooding to portions of Texas and northern, northeastern Mexico, forecast to become a tropical storm by Wednesday. Summary of the 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time 1500 UTC information. Its location is 21.8 north, 92.7 west. It's about 355 miles or 570 kilometers east-southeast of La Pesca, Mexico. And it's about 410 miles southeast of Brownsville, Texas. Maximum sustained winds at the moment are 40 miles per hour. Its present movement is north or 5 degrees at 7 miles an hour or 11 kilometers per hour. Its minimum central pressure is 999 millibars or 29.5 inches. Watches and warnings. We have no new changes. <sighs> Excuse me. We have no new changes with this advisory. The summary of watches and warnings are in effect currently. A tropical storm warning is in effect for the Texas coast from Port O'Connor, southward to the mouth of the Rio Grande, the northeastern coast of Mexico, south of the mouth of the Rio Grande, to Puerto de Almeria. Altmaria. <laughs> tropical storm warning means that tropical storm conditions are expected somewhere within the warning area within 36 hours. For storm information specific to your area in the United States, including possible inland watches and warnings, please monitor products issued by your local National Weather Service forecast office. For more for storm information specific to your area outside of the U.S., please monitor products issued by your National Meteorological Service. <clears throat> so now we move into the discussion and outlook. At 10, at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time, the disturbance was sent near latitude 21.8 north, longitude 92.7 west. The system is moving toward the north near 7 miles an hour. Turn toward the northwest and west with an increase in forward speed is expected tonight and on Wednesday. And the system is forecast to reach the Gulf Coast of Mexico by Wednesday night. Maximum sustained winds are near 50, 40 miles per hour or 65 kilometers an hour with high gusts. <laughs> yeah. Some increase in strength is likely during the next 36 hours. 
and the servants is to be on the tropical swarm by Wednesday. Formation chance through 48 hours is high 80%, and formation chance through 7 days is high 80%. The disturbance is quite large with tropical storm force winds extending outward up to 290 miles north of the center. The estimated minimum central pressure is 999 millibars. <laughs> oh my. So you might be wondering, why isn't this thing a tropical storm if it has tropical storm force winds? So the reasoning behind that is... That the system isn't fully congealed. It's sort of a mess right now. And if we switch over to Radar Omega here. You will see that. We go to. We have a bunch of showers and thunderstorms around the center. Which we believe is somewhere in there. There's like three different areas of circulation. There's one down here, there's one right there, and then there's supposedly one up in this area. So there's three areas of circulation associated with the cell, with the storm. Which isn't great. It needs to get all of those circulations or... One needs to become dominant in order for it to really do something. So the key messages for potential tropical cyclone one can be found in the tropical cyclone discussion under AWIPS header Mont Scott one and WMO header Wind four one KNH two. So, rainfall. Central Tropical Cyclone 1 is expected to produce rainfall totals of 5 to 10 inches across... Oh my god. <sighs> I apologize. Is expected to produce rainfall totals of 5 to 10 inches across northeast Mexico and southeast Texas with maximum totals of 15 inches possible. This rainfall will likely produce flash and urban flooding along with new and renewed river flooding. Mudslides are also possible in areas of higher terrain across northeast Mexico. For a complete depiction of forecast rainfall and flash flooding associated with potential tropical cyclone 1, please see the National Weather Service Storm Total Rainfall Graphic Available at hurricanes.gov slash graphics underscore ATL dot SHTML question mark rain GPF and the flash flood risk graphic at hurricanes.gov slash graphics underscore ATL dot SHTML question mark ERL. Then we'll read that tweet that they just put out in a minute here. Storm surge. The combination of a dangerous storm surge and the tide will cause normally dry areas near the coast to be flooded by rising waters moving inland from the shoreline. The water could reach the falling heights above ground somewhere in the indicated areas if the peak surge occurs at the time of high tide. <laughs> Sergeant Texas to Sabine Pass, Texas, two to four inch, two to four feet. Galveston Bay, two to four feet. Mouth of the Rio Grande, Texas to Sergeant Texas, one to three feet. Sabine Pass to Vermilion Cameron Parish Line, Louisiana, one to three feet. The deepest water will occur along the immediate coast near and to the north of the landfall location, where the surge will be accompanied by large and dangerous waves. Storm-related flooding depends on the relative timing of the surge and the tidal cycle, and can vary greatly over short distances. For information specific to your area, please see products issued by your local National Weather Service forecast office. 
For a complete depiction of areas at risk of storm surge in the nation, please see the National Weather Service peak storm surge graphic available at <sighs> hurricanes.gov slash graphics underscore ATL dot SHTML question mark peak surge. In Mexico, minor coastal flooding is possible north of where the center of the system across the coast in areas of onshore winds. When tropical storm conditions are expected within the warning area by tonight or Wednesday. <coughs> tornadoes. A couple of tornadoes may occur across portions of deep south Texas on Wednesday. Surf. Swells generated by the servant swell effect the coast of Texas and northeastern Mexico through Wednesday night. These swells are likely to cause life-threatening surf and rip current conditions. Please consult products from your local weather office. Next, uh, Air Media Advisory is at 1 p.m. CDT, and the next full advisory is at 4 p.m. CDT. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the... Yeah, pretty much just what we just went over with that. <clears throat> so it looks like we're still expecting a 45 knot peak here with the storm you don't know what 45 knots is to miles per hour that's about a 50 mile per hour Tropical storm that we're expecting still. Um. Here's the tropical storm force wind probabilities. Obviously in the area where the system is currently. That's obviously where you're going to see tropical storm force winds. Take a look at the arrival time. So, sometime between 8 a.m., 2 a.m., and 8 a.m. on Wednesdays, really when you guys along the coast of Mexico and far, far southeastern South Texas can really expect the tropical storm force winds of. Potential Tropical Cyclone 1 to move in. Take a look at the cone here. And as you can see, all the Tropical Storm Force winds here, marked by that orange outline, are to the north of where the center is. And it looks like by 7 p.m. on Wednesday, the center of this thing will be pretty close to the shore. So, expect landfall anytime between 5 and midnight tomorrow, is what I'd say. Sometime between that time frame is when we can expect landfall. Um, take a look at the rainfall graphic here. In Corpus Christi, you guys look... Like, you'll be getting the most rainfall. Maybe an area just as south of Midland, Texas, Mexico. That's really it. Then the flashlight potential, the WPC has issued a moderate risk here. Rainfall for Corpus Christi, San Antonio, and areas south of Houston. Peak surge map. There you can see from Sargent to Sabine Pass. Two to four feet of surge is expected here. Uh, 
<laughs> but other than that, that's really it for potential tropical cyclone one. And then, as you can see here, we have another disturbance here. And for this, we'll jump over to Radar Omega. So we'll start with our area of interest here near the Bahamas. Never mind, we won't go with Radar Omega. Because apparently it doesn't want to load the discussions. I don't know. So, for the southwestern Atlantic Ocean, an area of cloudiness and showers associated with it, located several hundred miles east of the Bahamas, is associated with surface trough in the upper level area of low pressure. Environmental conditions could be conducted for some gradual development of the system during the next few days while it moves westward or west northwestward. The system is forecast to approach the coast of the southeastern U.S. on Friday. Formation change through 48 hours, load 10%, and then the formation change through, 40, through one week is also low 20%. Then our new area, southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Another broad area of low pressure is forecast to develop over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico this weekend. Environmental conditions are expected to be conducted for a gradual development of the system early next week while it moves slowly north, east, northward or northwestward. Early next week while it moves slowly northward or northwestward. I'd said that same thing twice. But formation chance through 40 hours low, near 0%. And the formation chance through 7 days is also low, 20%. And as you guys can see, National Hurricane Center Director Dr. Michael Brenham will provide a live update on Central Tropical Cyclone 1 in the Gulf of Mexico around 11.30 a.m. EDT. Please join them on Facebook Live and the National Hurricane Center YouTube page. So they're going to be doing a live update on the storm here. <clears throat> but other than that, that's really it. I don't think we have anything in the Pacific anymore. Yeah, we don't have anything in the Pacific or the Central Pacific. So really, it's just the Atlantic right now that we're watching. But now you guys know where we're going. We're going to Tidbits. So there's PTC1 right there. <clears throat> Didn't really come together. There's our new system. And doesn't really do what much. Then GFS has something else swarming in the Gulf, acting like the Tallahassee area. Huh? I may get some winds from that if that develops. But obviously, take it as a grain of salt. Because this thing doesn't develop until about 200 hours out. But other than that, we don't really have any waves coming off of Africa that I'm seeing. <clears throat> and the Pacific seems to be quiet for the most part. So yeah, that's about it for the video today, guys. I'll have another update 
either at two or five, depending on if PTC one gets upgraded.